So it's my pleasure to share with you a really interesting case of a patient with a calcified left main proximal LAD and proximal circumflex bifurcation lesion, where lesion preparation will be done with the new C2 class IVL catheter. This is the story of a 60 year old male patient presented with non ST elevation acute coronary syndrome being symptomatic since two weeks. ECG shows sinus rhythm, some ventricular pacing there, and ejection fraction is significantly reduced down to 40% with a diffuse dyskinesia. Patient received earlier this year a pacemaker because of an AV block grade 3. In his history, patient already has documented three vessel disease with multiple PCI procedures in the LAD, in his circumflex artery, and also in the obtuse marginal branch. Now his vascular, cardiovascular risk profile is very profound, including arterial hypertension, hyperlipidemia, smoking, and a renal end stage failure. Now, looking at his medication, it included all of what these kind of patients deserve, including aspirin, ticagrelor, uropidil, cetagliptine, insulin, toracemide, xipamide, and ortovastatine. Looking at the blood sample markers, creatinine was substantially high, 6.35 mg per deciliter, being a GFR of 9 mg per minute. ENP is uh, significantly high, almost a little bit more than 4,500, and his diabetes is not very well controlled. Now, this is the coronary angiography of that patient, and yet you can appreciate the dilated left ventricle and the dilated heart. And what you can see is that, that there is a proximal, more circumferential stenosis at the ostium of the circumflex artery and also some additional disease in the proximal LAD. Please appreciate before contrast is going to show up, you see already shadowing there, which is calcium. More distal, there are the formerly implanted stents, but in the proximal part of both LAD and circumflex artery, there is angiographically visible calcium. The right coronary is very small and has no uh, significant disease that deserves treatment. Now, having said that in mind, um, we got to do a IVAS evaluation to better appreciate the distribution and amount of calcium in the left coronary artery. And what you can see in the distal mid um, LAD, there is some disease, there is a little spot of calcium at six o'clock, but adequate lumen, and this is potentially our distal landing zone. If we now go more proximal, we see that the stenosis is going to build up and that calcium is going to show both with the white color in the IVAS as well as with shadowing behind it. And this is now getting more and more to the circumferential, full circumference of the artery. And when we go very proximal, you see it becomes a little bit less in the left main. Oh, going to the circumflex artery, we see the formerly implanted stent. We then see proximal at the entrance of the stent, a white lumen, but in proximal to that, we see a heavily nodular appearance of calcification, more than 180 degrees, with a lot of shadowing there being a supercalcific lesion. Now, what is the treatment strategy for this particular patient? First of all, because of the impaired ventricular function, we intend to do an impeller-supported PCI procedure. We will do that IVAS guided, and we intend to do a PCI using a DK crush technique, so a two-device, two-stand te technique to treat the left main and the proximal LAD and proximal circumflex artery. And we will do that until the stent, is the newly implanted stent, is going to reach the formerly implanted one. We're going to do that with a so-called single access through the sheet of the impeller by using a six French um, sheet for the coronary procedure. And we will do that in our biplane lab in order to save as much contrast as possible because of the renal failure of the patient. Now, our goal is to address because the long calcific lesions in the proximal LAD and circumflex artery to use two C2 plus IVL catheters for both arteries so twice 120 pulses to make an adequate lesion preparation for that heavily calcified long lesion, both in proximal LAD and proximal circumflex artery. So this is now the wiring of the artery, both 
LAD and circumflex artery. And then you see the IVL positioning into the LAD. The catheter nicely and smoothly moves in there without predilatation, going to the dist most distal part there. And then we select six positions for that IVR catheter in the LAD going back to the left main. And each of these positions, we apply two times 10 pulses of energy. So a total of 100 pulses that this catheter provides, which is 50% more than that of the previous C2 catheter. This is then the angiographic control that we have achieved just with the lesion modification using the C2 plus catheter. This is followed by post dilatation with a non compliant balloon at the different stages, at proximal LAD down to the um, left main with a 3.5 millimeter non compliant balloon. And then we did a port dilatation. And then after having done that, we move with the second IVL catheter to the circumflex artery. Again, six positions from distal to proximal. At each, each position, two times 10 pulses are applied. This is then the angiographic result that has been achieved. And from that point on, we now started again with post dilatation with a non compliant balloon and moved into the procedure of the DK crush in order to uh, treat the uh, bifurcation lesion of left main proximal LAD proximal circumflex. We first fixed the distal part of the LAD stenosis with that 3.5 millimeter, 38 millimeter long stent with a nice result. And if we look by Ivers right now, we see that we have a nice open circular lumen achieved by the stent implantation. And you can nicely see that even in the proximal part where we were not totally round, but we have good and wide lumen there available. Now then we moved ahead and started the procedure in the circumflex artery. First stent being implanted with a little part of proximally hanging into the left uh, main, which then will be crushed by a six millimeter balloon. Dimensions were judged by the IVUS imaging that were done before. Then after rewiring the circumflex artery, we did the first kissing with two 3.5 millimeter balloons, both in LAD circumflex artery and together in the left main. And then we brought in the second stand, now from left main to the LAD being opened. And again, a pot procedure in the left main to fully oppose the stand struts against the vessel wall of the left main. This is the control after the two stands and the pot maneuver in the left main. I think geographically already a very nice result and please appreciate that the intermediate branch is still open, which is covered by the stents. And we need to rewire through the struts into the circumflex artery, which uh, you can see right now, and which was not so difficult to achieve. And this is now followed by the second balloon, kissing balloon dilatation, two balloons again, 3.5, in order to open up the struts to the circumflex artery. And the final maneuver is always like in DK Crush to have a final pot maneuver in the left main here with a 6 balloon. So this is the final result that we have achieved here in a quite complex case in a patient with significant renal failure um, with the impaired uh, ventricular, left ventricular function and left main LAD, left circumflex artery bifurcation stenosis heavily calcified where we did a DK Crush procedure with the, the help of the impella in order to keep the patient up and uh, with a very good and uh, effective lesion preparation using two of the new C2 plus catheters uh, that allows us even for longer segments of calcified disease to treat them very effectively and to make a good lesion preparation before the stents move in there. With having said that, I think we really have gained a very favorable result for the sake of our patient. <music>